husband is not deceased. He is assumed so. He is missing. But presumed dead. The way that you use space in a scene, like it feels mm. like there's a lot of negative space, even though it is in one location. And that's the other thing, when watching the movie, you completely forget that it is one location for the most part. Yes. I was listening to Ari talk. Ari was our cinematographer. Yeah, Ari Wigner, yeah. I, Ari, yeah, and she was saying, and I, and I hadn't really clocked this, although I should have probably earlier on, but um, the reason that there is a lot of space in the frame is essentially because we were making this for the cinema and actually when it's blown up to that size, you know, everybody just seem bigger. Um, and also it allows people to come in and out of frame and you can put two people there and then they can, you can, the composition can be, rather than being in close up all the time. And I thought that's, yes, I, I mean, I knew that, but I also, it was, it was useful to remember that actually, if you go too close, then you, th there is a sort of, um, it's too disturbing if you're there all the time, you've got to save those moments, haven't you? Having Catherine sort of positioned centrally and quite small in the frame made her feel like another object, like in that room, so you have the clock, you have the vase, you have Catherine, you have the sofa, in a way that the men had sort of had her in the house as another ornament. And you can hear, you know, the, the creaks of the house and the wind blowing, and it adds to the effect of, you know, tension or the quietness and the stillness of the countryside and kind of being isolated completely. Well, when we went to this house, what we found was the walls are so thick and when you stand there, and I was there with the production designer, Jacqueline, and we, um, she said, just listen for a minute. And we stood still and listened, and you couldn't hear the birds outside or the trees or any traffic. I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere. Um, but interestingly, inside, it also felt like a sort of vacuum. You know, there was no sound. I thought, this would be really useful for us because we, because we could then really create a sort of vacuum for Catherine. So when she sits there on this sofa, if you put the ticking of a clock in there, or just simply her breathing, then it becomes deafening in a way. When did you first meet Florence? Was it through the falling, or was it you know just through casting and auditioning? Well, Shaheen Beg, who cast Lady Macbeth, also cast the falling, so she knew of Florence. And I had seen the falling and saw Florence in that film, and thought you know she showed great promise. She's uh, well, she was good in that film, and then she came to meet us, and was fantastic. I mean, she is charismatic, she's funny, she's very self-confident, um, she's able to show that sort of youthful optimism that we need at the beginning, the hopefulness that she has as this young bride, but at the same time she is kick-ass. I mean you can see those qualities that she needs in the film towards the end as she goes on that sort of bloody conquest. Yes. I mean, she's amazing. I mean, absolutely, the, that sort of steely core is incredible. The other thing I wanted to ask you uh, about, uh, not just the performance, but also um, the way that the sort of the, the character plays out. I mean, I, I kind of felt almost, there were certain things that she does in the film that you obviously know are morally wrong, <laughs> but I was weirdly rooting for her. Was that something that you kind of we're you know wanting the audience to feel and, and and sort of and how that sort of played out that was the the beauty of what alice wrote i thought that actually we were seeing somebody who yes you wanted to you clearly had empathy with because from the beginning and you were rooting for her and then she does something which is really for a lot of people unforgivable right but for others it's just a natural consequence, and, and, there, and there is logic to what she does because of where she's been. So that she's spiraling down at that point, isn't she? Yeah. And I felt like if she's complicated and difficult and, and hard to understand, that's exactly what we want. We want to see those sorts of characters on screen, and we want them to be women because so often they're men. Right. And we don't have a problem with those people being complicated and conflicted and so on. But when it's a woman, especially in the Victorian era, suddenly people are like, but isn't she meant to behave in this way? And that, I think that was the problem also for the novelist, Nikolai Leskov, who wrote the book, that he could only understand her if she was a bit like a cruel person from a play, i.e. Lady Macbeth. And I watched uh, uh, Best last night, the, oh, uh, the you? short on, on, your, on your website, and just wanted to ask you about you know, confidence and, and, and did, did making those shorts kind of help you get to where you needed to go with Lady Macbeth? Y yes, I think, I think it was also because I had come from theatre. that When I made a, a first short film, it felt very much like film theatre. And I just couldn't understand why it didn't feel like cinema or the cinema that I had seen. So those, uh, those next few short films were absolutely me trying to work out how to develop cinematic language or like what 
drives a film rather than I knew what sort of dri drove a play. Yeah. But that's the, that we, they were all experimental. And so, the, yeah, the short films were a good way of actually building up the, the confidence and the knowledge to make a feature. Let him out. To the cross. To the prison. To the grave. To the, the sky. sky.